are worthy. You, Ty, she, her, whatever your name is, you are worth it. You are loved. Hi, my name is Ty and I am overjoyed, honestly enthusiastic to be asked to participate in such a embarking and fulfilling journey of women and who we actually are and how resilient we are, how empowering we are, how uplifting we are. If you haven't noticed, the name of this series is called Becoming Her. It's been quite a journey, but she, me, her, me, she's definitely worth it. Let me start off with a quick and very brief introduction of myself. If someone asks me, who am I? Who am I? Well, by birth, <laughs> my name is Ty. To some people, they call me D, uh, Redbone, Ty, uh, Preacher, First Lady, Evangelist, all of these nicknames that I've acquired over the course of the years. But if someone really asks me, who am I? I am the epitome of what was formerly known as a broken butterfly. Well, the real introduction of who I am, I have to go back 30 plus years. So if you have a moment, grab some tea, grab a snack, grab some tissue, <laughs> because I am truly a person that can honestly say it's definitely been a journey. Well, who am I? Foundation. About 30 plus years ago, I was born into a drug infested parental relationship. And both of my parents, birth, my birth mother and my birth father were addicted to drugs. So at the age of 11, I was formally adopted by my paternal grandparents. Um, and when I say paternal grandparents, I mean my father's parents. Um, and so that has definitely shaped who I was. Um, at the age of 12, I definitely um, experienced something that most people would think bent me. However, it did not. At the age of 12, my mother OD'd and uh, as a result, she passed away. My birth mother passed away. Um, when we talk about my birth father, um, many may not know or some still know, but my father actually still struggles to this day with addiction. That is definitely something that could have bit me. However, I can honestly say it has not. Um, being adopted by my grandparents has definitely been a blessing and a curse to be reared by such loving parents that really produced and rooted and grounded me in my faith as it relates to how I believe and how I am resilient and how if I had to describe myself in one word, it would be truly an overcomer. My life's journey is a very interesting, tumultuous episode of what many would honestly believe sometimes feels like a reality show. Um, it seems like daily there's a struggle, there's something going on, um, but God has been amazing and he's been faithful and he has definitely kept my mind honestly in perfect peace. Um, if I had to give another adjective of who I am. I am resilient. I am an overcomer. I am an amazing butterfly that was once buried in this cocoon of my birth, right, and who I was born to. However, God has allowed me to blossom into an amazing, intelligent, beautiful butterfly with education from Trinity Washington University and Morgan State University who I am also is looking at me, you would never know, but I am a classically trained opera singer who has traveled the world, the country, singing and allowing others to be blessed by the gift that only God could give me. 
Um, another thing just about my journey, who was I? As I said previously, uh, broken butterfly. I was born to drug addicted parents. I lived in foster care. I, as a result of foster care and living with drug addicted parents, I suffered physical abuse at a very early age, as well as I also dealt with child molestation. Did it bend me? No. Did it make me? Yes. Has it changed the trajectory of my life? Has it changed my thought pattern even in some ways about my own self? Yes. Has it changed my outlook on life? Yes, it has. But she, me, her, she still worked it. Even after all of the scars, after every stereotype, she, me, she's still worth it. Being a child growing up in foster care and dealing with the struggle of my parents still being addicted, still having a relationship with them, even post my adoption was definitely a journey. But me, even at a very tender age, I promised myself that I would never become a statistic, that I would never allow the resume of where I came from to be what people said about me. So looking back at my past, my past, dealing with my parents, you would definitely think I would be hooked on drugs. You would definitely think I would struggle with mental illness and prostitution, which are all the things that my birth parents struggle with. They battled my mother until her death, my father even until this day. But I, she, her, the one that's worth it, I stand here today or rather sit being a person. I've never allowed that to be my stereotype. I made sure that I persevered in school and education career wise because I never wanted anyone to be able to look at the foundation that I came from to say that's where she ended. No, ma'am, not me, not even you. My life's testimony is that how you start is never how you're going to finish. Some may think, wow, that's quite a journey, but what else is there to tie? Well, let's take a quite quiet detour. At 19, I was a student at Morgan State University, living my best life, traveling the world, learning how to perfect the gift that again God gave me as a classically trained singer. And I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer at 19. I was told that I would never have children. What a blow. I had my first surgery. And at my first surgery, I was told that the cancer would not return. And if it returned, it will be years before it returned. Not so. Nine and a half months later, I was back in the emergency room having another surgery. After treatments, after medicine, medication, therapy, it came back. I thought that I was good. Yet a year and a half after that, I had to have another surgery. In that surgery, I got the bottom half of my cervix removed. And I was told that if I ever did have children, it would be very hard. I would have to get a shunt installed to help the baby stay in place. Did that break me? No. Did it bend me? Yes. What woman wants to get the news at such an early age that she'll never be able to complete a man's family? No one. Did it hurt? Yes. But in all of that, because I loved and I respected my parents, I chose to endure that journey alone. I did not tell my parents because my father, technically my grandfather, all of his siblings and his mom passed away from cancer. And he believed that when he gave his life to Christ, he broke the curse over his family. Who would I be to share the news that me, your child has cancer, so I didn't. And I chose to struggle or to endure that alone. What kept me was my faith in God. Every stumbling block that has ever come in my life, my faith 
in God is the only thing that has helped me ground to be grounded, to hold on to some grasp of hope that there has to be better, that there will be better, that this is not how my story ends, that I, even broken, will still one day prosper into being an amazing butterfly. Do I still struggle? Is it hard sometimes? Yes. But guess what? Again, I am proof that no matter how dark your day is, that no matter how hard the journey seems to be, you can rise up from the ashes. Because gold is one of those things that it has to go through the fire. It has to get burnt in order to be resilient. And who am I? I am gold. I am amazing, talented, gifted, outstanding woman that no matter how many times life tried to break me or life tried to bend me or alter the trajectory of my life or alter who God said that I would be, it didn't happen. I am grateful for family. I am grateful for friends that have literally been the anchor to help me to get back to who I am. But no one wants to hear all of the positive. Somebody said, well, you went through all of that. What is it that bent you? So let's talk about that. Because even my faith in God could not prepare me for the storm that lied ahead that would literally break me to my core. It would shatter me into pieces that I can't even explain. Not even super glue or a hot glue gun could help me put back the shattered pieces as small as they were together. As loved as many people say that I should be, because you're light skinned, you're talented, you make six figures, you are a classically trained singer, you're well known in the church, you are educated and profound in your speech and your story is so inspiring. There's still a storm waiting for every last one of us. My storm was something that for years I struggled with and I never knew just how bad it was going to affect me. And my struggle is the crave and the need for genuine love. That's all I ever wanted. That's all I ever needed. Growing up and being adopted, sometimes you really don't understand that you live your life out of the need and the crave for love. From being as young as a child, I can remember always trying to make other people happy because I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to feel love. I wanted to get the approval of people who honestly, I didn't necessarily need their approval, but I didn't know it. So in about 2017, I met a person who I thought loved me. And I really thought that because I was smart, because I was pretty, because I was single and I had no kids. And in this age, that is such an amazing thing. So they say, I have many friends that struggle with, oh, I've been in all of these relationships. I have all of these kids out of wedlock. Who will want me? I thought that I was a rare breed. Took me rock bottom to find out I wasn't necessarily a breed. A rare breed. So, in 2017, I met a guy, and I honestly thought that he was God's gift for me. I thought that God loved me so much that God had decided that all of the drama that I had been through in my previous relationships, that God was finally going to reward me with my one. I mean, this guy wooed me into thinking that he was amazing. He was gifted. He was in the church. Currently, he actually is a pastor. 
Um, I mean, he didn't necessarily need me with the hair, the makeup, the clothes, the money. He literally just appeared to just want me for me. But oh, what a journey that was ahead of me. So I fell really hard. I mean, I fell really hard in love with this guy. And I really thought God really loves me. But oh, when the tables turned, this guy acted as if he didn't know me. We would see each other in the mall or the gym and he would literally ignore me as if I was nothing. He literally made me feel like a dirty napkin that he only used me for the good. And the pain that that caused because of course your parents tell you you're pretty they're supposed to your friends encourage you that's what they're there for but i've always struggled and i still struggle with the desire to be genuinely loved by a male do i need it no is it comforting yes everybody wants to know that you didn't choose wrong. I wanted to know that I didn't allow the fact that I chose education and a career and goals and aspirations and helping, that I didn't allow that to be the one thing that prevented me from receiving love, that it didn't make me look inferior to other people, that it didn't intimidate me. But how was I wrong? What did I do was the questions that I asked myself. It took me rock bottom. It took me to a depression. Honestly, it took me so low that I contemplated killing myself because I felt worthless. I felt so unloved. I felt, I can't even explain the true words that I felt. I thought, if he doesn't love me, who actually will? I felt, why after all of these years would God send somebody to love me? Every relationship that I had had previously had never worked out at whatever reason. And because my faith in God was so strong, and because I went to church weekly and they always talked about how Ruth was in the field working and she obtained her Boaz, I was working. I was educated. I was smart. I thought I was pretty. I thought I had everything going for somebody to want me. And when they finally came and they did, they treated me as if I was less than I mean, this person called me out of my name and called me stupid and crazy and they made me feel less than beneath. Like, because of the fact that my faith was so strong and I really believed that God had ordained this person to be specifically for me, God was showing me his love. And then for this person to turn around and to be the most disgusting, horrible, unconsiderate person. Like he literally hit a 360, a complete turnaround out of all the things that I've been through, out of cancer, out of child molestation, out of physical abuse as a child, out of dealing with parents that were and still are addicted to drugs. Out of all of that, that was the one thing that knocked me to my knees. There were so many things in life that I've been through that I felt like I could conquer, but I could not control the fact that I wanted this person to love me and he wouldn't. Not only would he not, he couldn't. And it took me years to understand that it wasn't me. I blamed myself for years. And I said, maybe if I was prettier, maybe if my hair was shorter, maybe if I was skinnier, then 
he would really look like me. Maybe if I was different, if I wasn't so green in some areas. I beat myself up. I blamed myself. I cried for days. I was literally depressed for about a year. And it literally took me one day to drag myself up from the sheets of my bed to look myself in the mirror and to remember again my faith. To remember a scripture that says that I am fearfully and wonderfully made in him. And that was the day that I realized that, guess what? It's not my fault that he did not have the capacity to love me. And at the end of the day, I had to realize it was his loss and my gain. Because even through that, God did show his love. And his love was that he didn't let that last. Because he knew that I, she, her, the one that's worth it, was worth so much more. My value was more priceless than any ruby. And because of that, God allowed me to escape that hurt. Do I still struggle with sometimes not feeling that I'm enough for other people? I do. But if I had to give any advice to my younger self, I would consistently encourage and impart wisdom to myself to tell myself, you are worth it. You, Ty, she, her, whatever your name is, you are worth it. You are loved. And if no human on earth loves you, the Father above loves you. Do I sometimes wonder if I'll ever be able to visibly see love in a human format? I do. Do I struggle and wonder if my last name will ever change? I do. But the beauty in all of that is, if I never experience it, I have learned on this journey called life that I, Ty, I'm so worth it. I'm so worth more than what the average person wants to give. I am worth every sacrifice. I am worth the chase. I am worth every rose petal. I am worth my door being open. I am worth it. And guess what? So are you. So as you continue on your journey, becoming who you are, never let anyone rob you from the gift of knowing that you, even if your wing has been broken, you are still a beautiful, a beautiful butterfly.